Greetings. Congratulations to the newly ordained Pikunis. Now you are in Bodh Gaya, the place where the Buddha was enlightened, so sacred. And you have been studying with our uh, teachers, with our Pikuni teachers on Patimok. You have already covered the very important section, Parajika. Then you have covered Sangadi Sesa. Aniyata. Aniyata is not meant for the Pikunis, but it is for the Pikus, two of them. Then you have Nisakiya Pajitiya, and then Pajitiya, Pati Desaniya. You have already covered that. Today I will talk about two topics, uh, the last two sections in the Patimok, that is Sekhiya and Atikrana Samatha. Uh, the text which I use, I have to pay my respect to, to uh, the one who, whom I arrived my uh, the information which I would like to share with you. You know, uh, King, King Rama IV, before he became king, he, was, he spent 27 years as Piku. And he was the one who actually started Dhamma Nikaya in Thailand. So he was really well known, well versed in his understanding of both Dharma and Vinaya. Now when he came to the throne and became King Rama the fourth of Thailand, his son, he, he had many children, one of his sons actually became a monk. And later on he became also the Sangaraja. His name, as we know of, is uh, Venerable, Most Venerable Vachirayana Varora, Varorot, which means the good son of Vachirayana. Vachirayana was the monastic name of King Rama IV when he was a monk. So I am referring to the information that I'm giving you or sharing with you today is from his explanation on, on the Vinaya. It is, a, it is a kind of commentaries on the Vinaya. He really focused very much on the Vinaya. Actually, he wrote three volumes, number one, number two, number three, Entrance to Vinaya, or Vinaya Muk, number one, number two, number three. And the one that I'm sharing with you to understand Sekhiya is in Vinaya Muk, volume one, okay? In, in Sekhiya, we understand that it is about Vata. Vata is duty, duty or tradition, that which should be practiced. First, we may say that, oh, it is uh, not very important. It deals with good manner. But I think it's very important after I really uh, take a close look at it, I really find it's very important for us, for all of us, to actually take a very careful look at Sekiya. Why I, I, now I feel that it's very important? Because it is, um, it is what, what the lay people, what the public see of the monastics, you know, uh, the, the way you appear in public, it all is covered in this Sekiya. There are all together 75 training rules. And the, the first section, the first section deals with uh, Sarupa. Sarupa is proper behavior. And actually it is divided into uh, 13 pairs. It comes in a pair. So 13 pairs, you have 26 training rules in Sarupa. I will try to go through them slowly. And the second section is Poch Pochana. Pochana means meals. Pochana pati sangyutta. Uh, the collection of uh, these rules dealing with food. 30 rules on this particular pochana only. Why so? Because, you know, we, we are usually, monastics are usually invited to go out and, and have meals, have dana at the lay people's house. And this is where they really observe you. Particularly in Thai tradition, you know, they always allow the, the monastics to eat before the lay people, which means that while the monastics sit there in line, you know, sitting in a straight line like this, eating, the lay people will be, will be watching you. So the, the manner which the monastics eat is something 
to be observed very carefully by the lay people. So that's why uh, there are at least 30 training rules for us to study. Some of them you may think that it is obvious, but some of them not. So we will look at them very carefully. And that the third section is called Dhamma Desana Pati Sangyut, collection of uh, those rules which deals with how you should give Dhamma Desana, how you should give Dharma talk. Of course, even though you are newly ordained, nobody knows that you are newly ordained once you have this appearance, you know, shaved head, wearing the robe. And some of you are already in your 50s, in your 60s. People might have thought that you are actually senior Pikuni. So you must be able to give Dharma talk from the start. So please understand that. Even uh, five minutes, you know, they would expect you to give Dharma talk. So now, do we, that's why we have to learn about when and how to give Dharma talk. There are 16 training rules in Sekiya which deals with how we can give Dharma talk. And the last one, the last section, number four, it is called Pakinaka. Pakinaka is miscellaneous. Miscellaneous, there are only three training rules. Allow me to go through this slowly with you. The first one, the first section, Sarupa. Sarupa, the first one comes in pair that I shall walk, I shall wear the under rope that is antravasaka properly that is when you wrap around yourself it is not hanging in front it is not hanging behind the, the word correctly properly means that so you I shall wear the under rope properly I shall wear the upper rope properly the jivra jivra uh, so this is already one pair the next pair is the third and the fourth Sikhavada deals with I shall go well covered, well covered in, in, in the, what you call, inhabited area, in the place where people live, you know, when you go in a village like that. So you, you, you are well covered. When you sit, you also sit well covered. Then the next one is that I shall go with downcast eyes even your eyes, you know. When you enter a house, a household, even though you may be seated very, very quietly, but your eyes wander around like that, looking at their belongings in the house, is not proper. So must also be mindful to train your eyes, that you look, downcast your eyes, you know, don't, don't look all over. When you walk in, when you sit, it's another pair. Another pair is, I shall not go with jivra hitch up. Hitch up is like you are lifting up the jivra on one side or the other uh, while entering, entering the village or entering the, the household or as you sit, you are still hitching up your jivra. That is another pair that we should study. Then, I shall go with little sound. You, you don't make noise, you know, you don't make a loud noise when you enter a household, when you sit in a household. The next one, I shall not go fidgeting. Fidgeting is swaggering uh, 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 the, the body when you go in the household, both entering as well as sitting in the household. The next pair is, I shall not go fidgeting or swinging the arms as you enter the household or you sit in the household, you don't swing the, the arm, you don't fidgeting, you know, that is the, the English word, moving here and there, left and right like that. The, the, another pair is, I shall, not, I shall not go with arms akimbo. Now what is this arm akimbo? You know, you lift up your elbow like that with arms like this, this is called akimbo not while you're walking and not while you are sitting. It is not proper. Uh, uh, it is a, a kind of body, body gesture that is not, not, it is considered not polite, not polite, even for lay people, for lay people, yes. The next pair is, I shall not go with the head covered. And the next one is, I shall not sit with the head covered, you know, like, you have the jivra, the jivra should be on your shoulder like that, but you have the jivra to cover your head. That is not proper. 
The next pair is I shall not walk on toes or heels, you know, uh, tiptoeing as though you're going to steal uh, something or walking on your, on your heels. It's like a playful way, you know, a playful way. Try, try to walk on your heels or try to walk on your toes. That is not proper when you enter a household. So th these are some some these are some of the, the the rules in the first section, which is how do you appear, you know, uh, sarupa, how do you appear in public? That the next section the next section deals with the group on food pochana on on food. You we have all together uh, we have all together thirty rules. This is not in pair. It it, it doesn't come in two two like that. The first one is you you shall accept I shall accept arms food appreciatively. One time one one senior a forest monk, you know, uh, he received a box, a big box of chocolate, you know. Some, some Western people or even some Thai people, they take it as, you know, chocolate is a good gift, you know, to, to bring as a gift. So uh, they brought this big, very expensive chocolate box uh, as a gift to, to forest monk. Now, this forest monk is very well known and he's very senior, you know. When he received this, he threw away the whole box on the, on the floor. and. The, the one who made, the donor, the one who actually made donation felt very, very sad, very sad when he did that. So uh, this is one of the sekiya that when you receive uh, the offering, uh, accept, uh, this one deals with food, accept food appro appreciatingly, appreciatingly. This is at least, you know, to honor the donor. Then the next one is to accept arms food with an attention on the bowl. Like, you know, uh, you may be going out for winter bath. You look in your bowl attentively, not looking, not, not looking elsewhere as though you are not giving uh, importance to the, to the food that you are actually, you are receiving from the donors. So this is a very appropriate behavior. The next one, I shall not, I shall accept arms food with other food, super, in proportion. Uh, this goes together with another one that we will be dealing with is how to eat, how to eat rice and, and soup. Like in Indian food, you know, you have rice and you have dal. Uh, when, when dal is too much, when we accept dal too much, then it, it becomes very difficult to eat, you know, it, it must be proportioned. So be, be careful to accept it, uh, proportion, so much rice and so much, so much supa, so much uh, dal, so much curry. The next one is, I shall accept arms food level up to the edge of the bowl. If it is already full, it means full, not, not, not to accept more than that. Actually, one, one bowl is uh, already uh, too much for, for each one of us to handle it. And no, normally when we come back from Bintabad, we share our arms food with other monastics who did not go out. Yet in another, in another rule, we have that suppose if you go out and people make offering of some kind of sweets, don't take more than two to three bowls, which means that not for yourself, but for the Sangha. The next one, I shall eat the arms food appreciated appreciatingly. This goes together with the other one that just, you just accept, accept the arms food appreciatively and this one is to eat appreciatively. Not uh, particularly, not having the feeling of, oh, this is not good food, you know, that kind of attitude is not appropriate for us. I shall eat arms food with attention on the bowl, looking in our own bowl, not looking somewhere else, not looking at the next person sitting next to you. I shall eat the arms food evenly, you know, rice in the bowl, even like that. This is a training. The next one, I shall eat the arms food with curries in proportion. I already explained this together with accepting it, rice and, and curry in proportion. 
I shall not eat the arms wood working down from the top. You know, it is like uh, uh, we, we have to understand the Indian context when when line of monks, line of people eating in in row like that. You know, usually seated on the on the ground on the floor, and then maybe they provide you with a tray, or maybe you, if you go out. Picnic like, you know, the, the tray is actually made of dry leaves pinned together. So they would put lots of rice, of course, lots of, like, like mountain of rice like that. And, uh, and then they would put uh, curry, put curry on top, or sometimes they would have some fried, fried uh, vegetable, fried meat in a bowl like that. That it will come to with the next one that sometimes you because you want to have more so you, what you already have you bury that in in the rice you know so that uh, this with an intention that you wanted to have more when when they come another round the serviceman come another round and they noted that you don't have that ball of whatever food that that you like he would offer you another one thinking that you have not received in the first round so when we hide things like that with an intention of getting more, that is against the sekiya. Then the next one, I shall not, unless sick, ask for curry or rice for my own benefit. Whatever is offered, that is sufficient. We don't ask for more. Uh, this you will see that Particularly at a, a big function, you know, like hundreds, they, they invite hundreds of people. You will see the, the, the people who are seated for food, they start yelling for this, yelling for that. That is not the attitude of monastic. What is, what is offered in front of us that is sufficient. We should, we should be uh, polite in our way of receiving, in our way of eating. The next one is don't make... Uh, uh, don't, don't find fault. Don't find fault with another bowl. You know, you look at the bowl next to you, the person sitting next to you, and kind of critical about the person sitting next to you. That is not proper. Uh, I shall not make up an extra large mouthful. You know, sometimes you imagine that they eat with their fingers, no? So when they make too big a mouthful like this, it, it does not look nice. It's not proper for monastic. The next one. I shall not open the mouth when the mouthful is not brought to it. You know, like w opening your mouth, waiting for the food to be brought to your, to your mouth. <clears throat> it is not proper. I shall not put all the fingers. Imagine putting all the fingers in the mouth. That is not done. I shall not speak with a mouth, mouthful. This is all the good behavior from your household, your parents must have already been training you not to do this, you know. Uh, when we, still, we are still eating, you still have food in your mouth, we don't speak. I shall not eat tossing up. Now, some, some monks get to be playful, you know. Particularly when something that you can toss up, something dried, sticky, that you can toss up. Like in Thailand, you would have sticky rice. You always make a ball of sticky rice and playfully, you toss it up and then you receive it with your, with your mouth. That is not proper for monastic. Uh, I shall not eat biting upon a lump of rice. So, uh, at least in Thai tradition, whatever is offered, it, it they always make it appro appropriate size for you for a mouthful, you know, not, not too, too big a piece so that you can actually put it in your mouth properly. I shall not eat stuffing food onto the cheeks, you know, like, like that, you know, chomping, chomping on one side or another cheek like that, like, like how the monkeys do it, you know, that is not proper. Uh, I shall not eat scattering rice about. Th that, what happens is that when your fingers are uh, sticky with uh, both rice and well, as well as soup, you know, sometimes you just scattered <coughs> food that gets stuck to your fingers. That is not proper to do. I shall not eat putting the tongue out. Of course, you don't do that. That is not, not proper. I shall not eat 
making a, a jumping sound. This in, in Pali, it is called jipu jipu. You make the sound, jipu jipu, like that, you know, uh, not proper. And the next one comes together, you do not make suru suru, the sucking sound. I shall not eat cleaning or scraping the bowl. Now, when you eat in the bowl, uh, you use your finger like this in order to scrape the bowl inside. That is not proper. I shall not eat cleaning or licking the lips. That is also, you know, sometimes your, your lips get dirty, always have a piece of cloth or a tissue to wipe your, your lips. Not cleaning your lips with your tongue, so to say. I shall not in a household throw away the, the water which you wash your bowl with you do not throw away on the greens so this is the the, uh, the section dealing with food very important because you are sitting there in front of people so you have to have this eating manner properly the third section the third section deals with how to give dharma dharma talk uh, dharma dharma days the Dharma Desana Pati Sangyutta. There are altogether 16 training rules in this section. Uh, you do not teach Dharma to a person who is holding on umbrella, who is holding on a staff, you know, uh, who is ho holding on to a knife, holding still having a weapon in his hand, uh, uh, one who is still wearing sandals one who is still wearing footwear you know this is a, a sign that the other person they are not in they are not ready they are not ready to re, to receive dharma so we as monastics we should not be giving dharma when the other person are not ready you know when the person walking on the path and you are outside the path the walkway you know uh, that is also not proper so this is to be studied there are 13 rules uh, so, sorry there are 16 rules to be uh, carefully studied when and how we should give dharma to the lay people you know, one walking behind standing uh, the one is sitting and you are you are standing you don't don't give dharma dharma talk at that time you know or the per, the person who is walking ahead of you you are behind trying to uh, teach dharma to that person that is also not done and then then come to the last one the last one is uh, the last section is called pakinaka pakinaka actually means miscellaneous there are only three here you have uh, i shall not uh, ur urinate while standing i shall not unless ill uh, i shall not spit on the green or spit into the water so these are three last in the last section three miscellaneous rules that we need to uh, observe in sekiya even though sekiya we may say that it is a uh, it is um, good behavior, mannerism, but I think this is what people see of us. And particularly people who are not Buddhist yet, when they look at you and you, you're very well mannered, very well trained, they really have faith. You remember the story of uh, Venerable Sariputra. Venerable Sariputra, even be, be, before he became a Buddhist, you know, the person he saw was Venerable Ajitta. Venerable Achitta was going out for arms round and uh, Venerable Sariputra observed Venerable Achitta. Oh, very, you know, he walked very mindfully and he received food very mindfully. He, the way he sat down, the way he ate his meal, so very polite. So, so Venerable Sariputra waited until Venerable Asachi finished his meal. Only then Venerable Sariputra approached him and asked, who was your teacher? You know, what kind of teaching you get from your teacher? You see how, how uh, just simply uh, Venerable Achita was very well mannered and can be seen from outside. How it can actually raise faith in a person who did not have faith yet in Buddhism. So all of us, it is our responsibility that we need to project this uh, behavior proper behavior of monastics 
to the to the world outside. So all of us, we do have this responsibility. And uh, as you are just newly ordained, but to the outside world, how do they know that they are just you are just newly ordained? So uh, and some of you are already. 50s, 60s, you know. So people would imagine that maybe you are already, you are already senior pikunis, you know. So sekiya is not only observed among the pikus and pikunis. Even samaneri, sikhamana, also have to observe. So the samaneri they have 10 precepts plus 75 sekiya. And now the the machi, you know, the machi, the donchi, you know, they have not yet received. Papacha, they also observe Sekiya. So Sekiya is actually a monastic, uh, monastic appearance, you know, how you appear in public, in the way you dress, in the way you walk, in the way you, you teach, in the way you eat. Very, pro very appropriate that all of us must not only study, but also study and put it into practice. And not for not for ourselves only, but also for the public to actually increase their faith in Buddhism. So it becomes our responsibility together.